guys, I'm Monica and today I'm going to be going over tips on how to succeed in your sub eye and get that stellar letter of recommendation. So let's get right into it. The overarching rule is this, be the intern. Whatever the intern does, you do. You take full ownership of the patient. And if you have a good resident, the resident is going to turn to you for all concerns relating to your patient. Now what are some ways you can take charge of your patient? Well, I'm about to tell you. Today I'm going to give some practical tips and tips on how to stand out on your sub eye. So keep on watching. Tip number one, be aggressive about being the first line of contact for your patient. One of the most frustrating things that I went through as a medical student is that the nurse would still page the intern rather than me for concerns relating to my patient. And so I always felt like I was a step or even several steps behind. So build good rapport with the patient's nurse. Seek out the nurse and introduce yourself. Say that you're the sub intern and you would like to be the first person the nurse pages for anything related to that patient. And this is important, make sure that the nurse can easily find your pager number. So it depends on what institution you go to. By our institution, we have Epic, and so you can assign yourself to the care team. But when a medical student assigns themselves to the care team, their pager number doesn't actually show up. So I recommend adding it in the comment box so that it's there for the nurse to easily find, and then he or she can actually page you first before the intern. Tip number two, come in earlier than you think you need to, at least in the beginning. So even if morning sign out is at 7 a.m., you should be getting there at about 6.30 a.m. at the latest because you wanna leave ample time to do all your pre-rounding so that you're not stressed before attending rounds. Probably you don't have to do this on your first day because you're not assigned patients yet, but from the second day forward, I do recommend that you come in early. On your first day where you actually have patients, keep track of how long it's taking you to pre-chart and how long you end up spending with each patient while you're pre-rounding. And then you can calculate backwards to figure out what time is the best time for you to come in in the morning. Now don't forget to leave enough time to do work rounds with the resident. So you always wanna run your patient's plans by the resident before attending rounds. Tip number three, nail down a routine within the first two days. Have a step-by-step -step routine for everything, including how you pre-chart, what you're gonna ask your patients, and how you're gonna organize your day. And by the way, I have a short video on how to write a task list to help you organize your day, so be sure to check that out after you watch this video. I won't go into detail here about routines because my next video is actually going to be on my step-by-step -step routine for pre-rounding, so be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can be alerted for when that video comes out next week. Tip number four, optimize your EMR as soon as possible. So if your institution has Epic, then what tabs do your interns and residents see when they first open a patient's chart? What note templates do they use for admissions, progress notes, and discharge summaries? What are some useful dot phrases? So these are some things that you wanna ask your resident and your interns on day one. Or even better, if you have friends who just finished their sub-internship and have these templates and dot phrases, then it's really useful to get them from your friend ahead of time so that you're extra prepared on day one. On inpatient wards, efficiency is the key to success and helps ward against burnout. Tip number five. After you talk about a patient on rounds and you go into the patient's room, be the one to explain the plan to the patient. Some attendings will start talking immediately, but really try to be the one that speaks up and starts counseling the patient. And this is great because the attendant can then observe how you interact with patients and how you're able to counsel them, and they'll be able to comment on this in your letter of evaluation. Tip number six. Seek feedback from your attending about halfway through your time with them. So I've said this before and I'll say it again, it really sucks to wait till the end of the rotation and then you get this constructive feedback and it's something that you could have fixed easily. And some tough love here, it's not your attending's responsibility to pull you aside and give you feedback halfway through their time with you, unless it's something egregious and needs to be fixed ASAP. It's your responsibility to ask for feedback. Tip number seven. So I've given this tip before, but I'll give it again, call families. I really do think that this is important. The families are gonna appreciate it, the patients are gonna appreciate it, and your team's gonna appreciate it. And I promise your team will notice if you're making it a priority to update your patient's families, with the patient's permission, of course. My last tip is to help with discharge planning. Discharge planning is a whole thing, and it's important to remember that it starts as soon as a patient's admitted. So when you're taking your social history and your HMP, you really wanna find out some key details. 
like where the patient lives, who takes care of the patient, how functional is the patient, how mobile is the patient, because these are the factors that are going to determine where the patient is most likely to go after discharge, whether that's home with home health services or to a facility like an acute rehab unit or a skilled nursing facility. As soon as the patient's discharge destination becomes apparent, it's really important to get the ball rolling early so that when the patient's ready to be discharged, the discharge isn't delayed. And if your hospital has interdisciplinary rounds as part of the daily schedule, I really encourage you to actually take part in it. Thanks for watching guys. Like and subscribe for more tips on how to succeed in medicine. And you can also find me on Instagram and TikTok for medical education and medical humor. Bye guys.